The Tibial Access Training Program is designed to help you understand and use the EZIO AD infusion system. Our collective goal at VitaCare remains immediate, safe, effective vascular access for all critical patients. VitaCare's approach to this goal is simple. The right equipment in the best hands where it's needed most. At the completion of the supplemental training program, if you still have questions or concerns, please call us at 1-866-479-8500 or visit our website at www.vitacare.com. IO tibial access is indicated when traditional access is difficult or impossible. This would include conditions such as an altered level of consciousness, respiratory compromise, or hemodynamic instability. Tibial access is contraindicated when there is a fracture of the tibia. There's a previous orthopedic procedure near the insertion site. There's infection at the insertion site. Or there's an inability to locate the landmarks or excessive tissue. Anytime you're providing care to the public, it's important to protect yourself as well as the patient. Practicing proper body substance isolation is vital to quality patient care and is recommended. Now let's take a look at the proximal tibial anatomy. With this slide, you can identify the structures of the tibia. Important points to note include the cortex at the epiphysis, our easy IO insertion site, versus the thicker compact bone on the diaphysis. Note also the vasculature crossing between the cancellous bone through the thin cortex and into the veins. This makes IO infusion possible. In this slide, we can identify the major structures of the lower leg. The three easy IO landmarks include the tibia, the patella, and the tibial tuberosity, which is, of course, the bump or raised area on the anterior aspect of the front of the tibia. Can you identify the landmarks on yourself or someone else? Once you've identified the landmarks and the easy IO insertion site, it's time to clean the insertion site in preparation for easy IO insertion. Clean the site appropriately, it's time to insert the easy IO needle set. Ensure that you stabilize the leg, position the easy IO driver at a 90 degree angle to the bone, and then allow the driver to do the work as you gently guide the needle set into position. It's important to note that once you've completed the easy IO insertion, you need to stabilize the needle set prior to any attempt at removing the driver. Failure to stabilize the needle set while removing the easy IO driver may cause inadvertent dislodgement. Once the needle set has been placed in the appropriate position, it's time to confirm that placement. First, ensure the stability of the entire needle set. At this point, protect the sterile end of the catheter by immediately attaching a primed easy connect. Now let's take just a few brief moments to ensure that the easy IO is in the correct position. There are four specific things you can do to ensure that the catheter is in the correct position. First, the catheter is firmly seated and does not move. Second, you note blood at the catheter hub. Third, you're able to aspirate blood or marrow. Fourth, drugs or fluids flow without difficulty and there are no signs of extravasation or leakage. A word of caution at this point. Conscious patients will experience pain with IO infusion prior to lidocaine. However, flow rates may be significantly compromised without a 10cc syringe flush. There are three other things you can do to ensure that the catheter is in the correct position. First, you may have noticed or checked at the tip of the stylet that there was blood prior to placing it in the stylet shuttle. Another secondary indication that you notice the immediate effects of the drugs you've administered via the I.O. And lastly, if you're working in the hospital setting, an x-ray could be used to confirm placement. There are four important points to consider once the easy I.O. A.D. has been established. First, routinely reconfirm that the easy I.O. A.D. catheter is secure and in position. Second, Maintain appropriate protection at the insertion site, guarding against accidental bumping or dislodgement. Third, frequently monitor the easy IOAD, the fluid you're administering, and the extremity. And lastly, ensure that you remove the easy IO AD within 24 hours. Avoid rocking the easy IO catheter during usage. Use of the easy connect supplied with the needle set will help you to avoid complications. Attaching a syringe during treatment could lead to extravasation or catheter failure. Now that you've placed and confirmed the easy IO AD catheter's position, attached a primed easy connect, it's time to begin your infusion. Remember that the easy IO catheter must be flushed with 10 cc's of fluid prior to an administration. Once you begin your administration, flow rates will be vastly improved with a pressure bag or infusion pump. Once you've completed use of the easy IO catheter, it'll be time to remove it. To remove the easy IO catheter from any approved location, attach a sterile syringe then rotate slowly clockwise while you gently pull. During the removal process, maintain a 90 degree angle and don't rock the catheter. 
Ensuring that you remove the catheter within 24 hours will help to avoid any unnecessary complications. This concludes our EZIO AD Tibial Access Startup Training Program. For a more comprehensive look at EZIO AD Tibial Access, please visit our EZIO AD Tibial Access In-Depth Training Program.